Does not force them to make this citation. Please listen. I am leaving this land. My spirit is with me. I shall not come back now. My shackles do not break. It is the shackles that holds the ship down. My ancestors bear me witness. I shall not return. This land shall depart. My soul do not revolt. My spirit goes along with me. I depart to the land unknown. I shall not return. We were exchanging a bottle of dry for 10 human beings. Then, presently, this is not up to 2,000 naira. <laughs> This is not light at all. This is very light. Is that light? <laughs> <laughs> it's not light. He said it's light. It's with oh. Adel, and there is a hard part watching. No wonder he was bending up. I was wondering why he was doing this. So we're still here and we are here to check the relics that was used those days. Big thanks to Cornerstone and now let's go in. That is beautiful. So, good afternoon. You're welcome to the movie family of Slavery Mission. But that bring the state. Where we have the real chain, chakus, used on our forefathers during the period of slave trade. Transatlantic slave trade lasted for about 350 to 400 years in Badagri. Transatlantic slave trade. It means these people are taken through the Atlantic Ocean. Because in Nigeria, then, we have two types of slave trade. We have Transatlantic, we have Trans-Sahara. Trans-Sahara, they take them to the Sahara Desert, down to wherever they are, they, they are taking them. Who are their customers? The Arab. British and the Portuguese were our major customers in Badagri. And so any slave gotten from Africa through Transatlantic slave trade, were usually taken down to Europe where they make them work in sugarcane, cotton, tobacco, plantation. Now, the harvested produce gotten from the plantation will now be taken from Europe down to America where they transform it to finished goods. And these finished goods will now be brought back to Africa for exchange of slave trade. And that's why we call it the Atlantic Triangular Trade. The same ship that comes to Africa to pick slaves is taking them to Europe. They make them work and the harvested produce will be taken to America. They transform it to finished goods. They bring the goods back to Africa for exchange or trade. And for about 350 to 400 years, any slave captured then from the eastern part of the country were usually taken down to Calabar. Just as we have located slave markets in Badaipa, they have a young slave market in Calabar. So they take them down to Calabar. Any slave gotten from the Oyo Empire, the Yoruba Sukin area, they bring them down to Badagri. Now, there was nothing like vehicle in those days. Slaves don't ride on the horse. They tread down to Badagri. In the course of moving them down to Badagri, some fell sick along the road. They don't treat them. Some die. They don't bury them. They allow them to get rotten by the side of the road. And those that fell sick, they return them back to where they are bringing them. And they use them as sacrifice to their gods. So, they trek them down to Badagri. Now, during this period, a market was established in Badagri for this trade, and that is Blekete Slave Market. Established in the year 1502. Over 300 slaves were sold inside the market every single market day. And the market day is every nine, nine days. So, over 70,000 slaves were being led out of Badagri through the Blekete Slave Market down to the new world. And so, after buying slaves from the, from the market, they take them to the barracoon where they store them for three to four months. And we have buildings like this along the coast of Africa. You see this in Nigeria, Ghana, Togo, Republic of Benin, where they store them. After the abolition of slave trade, they advise our forefathers to demolish all the relics of the slave trade. That's why we don't have the one at the point of it, it was destroyed after the abolition of slave trade here in Badagri. But we have one barracoon close to us where 40 slaves are kept in one room and there are 40 rooms inside the compound. 1,600 slaves are kept inside the barracoon. From the barracoon, they enter the slave port. From the slave port, they cross to the other side of the water. They are at the point of no return. So at the point of no return, they are them inside the ship. Now, because they are getting our people very cheap, they overload the ship. They release some of the slaves inside the water to lighten the weight of the ship and this will perish inside the water. Getting to where they are taking them to, they auction slaves 
or they advertise them on newspaper. If we have slaves to sell, they have public places where they do auctioning of slaves. Or you put it inside the newspaper. Oh, you are waiting for a ship that has how many number of slaves that you want to sell. So if you are interested, you go and wait by the shop of the advancing ocean over there. But as you are coming, you buy your slave. So these are the Jali advertised slaves during the period of slavery. They call them Negroes. But we blast. When we are doing guy, hey, I'm a nigger, I'm a nigger. Ne yeah. Indirectly, you are calling yourself slaves. Yes. They call black slaves Negroes during the period of slavery. These people were meant to work in the plantation. They work, and most times they don't eat what they labored for. And any slave who refused to work inside the farm, they punish them publicly. So that will serve as a deterrent to other slaves. Now, when you are talking about the abolition of slavery, the judgment for the abolition of slave trade was made in Europe in the year 1772. That was when they made that judgment that they should abolish slave trade. But this good news got to Badaki in the year 1852. 1772, 1852 was when the news got to Badaki. And so in the year 1852, all the eight ships, Badaki has its quarters, all the eight ships in Badaki signed the treaty of the abolition of slave trade with the then Queen of England in the year 18. 52. And that was when the British slave merchants stopped coming to Badagri. But the Portuguese were still coming. So in the year 1888, somebody in Badagri stopped the trade here in Badagri. And the person is Chief Sumumobi, buried here. He was a middle man between the white and the black. And that was what the people of Badagri were doing then. They buy slaves from their fellow black and we sell to the white man. The father usually buys things from his fellow black, we sell to the white man. So the man was nicknamed Mobi by the white man because whenever they come around, he offer them kola nuts. Kola nuts is called Obi in Yoruba language. So whenever they come, or you go in a Mobi jet, because he doesn't understand him, so he speak Yoruba to them, a Mobi jet. So this we, we always say I'm saying a Mobi jet each time they come to Badagri. So they gave him a nickname, she's Mobi. And so the family adopts Mobi as a family name. Mobi is now a ship that's tied to Badagri. So the father was selling slaves, but his son doesn't like the trade. Probably the missionary preached to him because his father was the one that accommodated the enemy missionary. The father was the one that gave him by that way. The slave inside the vessel. These are the real chains around their neck. And these chains are over 500 years old. As you can see, the chain is very light. <laughs> <laughs> this is not light at all. This is very light. So I did light. He <laughs> said it's light. <laughs> now, do you know why I said it's light? Mm -hmm. Slaves are meant to walk with this chain around their neck for 18 hours every day. Wow. 18 hours. Why traveling? This chain will be around them for three to four months. And it's only the strong strongest that gets to wherever they are taking them to. So this has become part of them. They don't see it as anything. In fact, this chain will build their muscle. So the slaves are meant to walk with this around their neck for 18 hours every day. And imagine the weight of the chain around the neck of the slaves walking inside the farm for 18 hours every day. They walk from morning to night. Please feel the weight of the chain. So how do you feel with the weight of the chain? It's Sir? Very heavy. But I just said it's very light. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the opposite of light. So imagine these on the neck of human beings. We can and not only with with hard labor. It's with hard oh. labor. And there are very hard part what you know. No wonder it was bending up. Mm -hmm. I was wondering why you were feeling But then it is heavy. Mm -hmm. Hello, sir? Now, depending on how long a chain is, a chain can have 5, 10 neck lock. This is a neck lock. Depending on how long the chain is, it can have arrange them on a single file while moving. So, the file is the neck lock, and this is a torture weapon used on the children or on, on any slave who refuse to work in the farm or slave who refuse to obey the white men. They force this into their hand down to the waist. Most of this doesn't go in easily. So they will need to break the bone mm. to force this to the rest of the slaves. 
And after forcing this to the rest of the slaves, they made say climb a platform. Then screw this up to a tall tree. The master comes out from the platform and removes the platform. The slave will now be suspended on the tree, dangling from morning to night. In the course of the days, most of them died. The white people doesn't care. Because our forefathers were being exchanged for high times. And this is called the mouth slave. There were two categories of slaves, and we have plantation slaves. Most times, domestic slaves were given special treatment because they are working in the house. They allow them to wear clothes, they give them good food, they, are, they have a good skin. Plantation slave eats once in a day. And so, for the male domestic slave not to impregnate the wife or children of the master, they castrate them. The second reason why they castrate them is for them to carry every object. And the third reason is for them to be their bodyguard. So, domestic slaves don't have access to the wife or children of the white men. That's why they castrate them. Female domestic slaves were used as wet nurse because the white man doesn't want the breast of their wife to suck. They don't want the breast to lose shape. Whenever the slave, whenever the wife is pregnant, they impregnate their female slaves. And as soon as both of them give birth, they can kill the child of the black woman and make that woman to breastfeed the child of the white woman, irrespective of the color of the skin of that baby, whether black or white. Or they take that baby to so another mother inside the farm to take care of. So those working on the farm were usually not allowed to talk to one another because the white men are afraid that when these people communicate in their local dialect, they can revolt. They usually pierce their mouth with hot iron. And in the morning while going to the farm, and they do what? They padlock their mouth for them not to eat or talk while working in the farm. And this is called the light chain used on the heads of the small children because they don't want the children of the slave to be moving about the farm so as not to step on what their parents have planted. They group the children to one side of the farm and chain their wrists with this. Make them sit under a tree far away from where their parents are working. So babies don't have access to their parents while they are working on the farm. Brandon Hyo. This was used in writing name on slaves during the period of slave trade. Because they don't bear name, they bear the name of their master. And for the master to be able to identify his slaves, the master will put this in fire. When this is red hot, he will use it to write his name on the body of the slave. This was what the children of the so-called African American saw on their forefather. Because their forefather could not explain how that right of God to their body, the children begin to pick this as fashion. And even after the abolition of slave trade, you see, you see them writing freedom mm -hmm. on their broad body. And we pick this as fashion today. We call it tattoo. The second function of this is to pierce the mouth of the slaves for them to be able to padlock their mouth. While the last function of this is to pierce the foot of any slave who tries to run away being captured. They put this in fire when this is red hot, they put the leg on the falling tree and hit this into the foot of the slaves to pierce the leg or break the bone inside the leg. And this is called the hand pull lock. For them not to run away, two of them need to share this around their leg and they have to walk with this around their leg at the same time. This was the money we spent in Africa in those scholars. But the white people doesn't recognize this as money. This was only recognized in Africa. And so that led to the introduction of trade by butter. Items like gun, gunpowder, dried in, cotton, iron, mirror, tobacco were used in exchange of slaves. Let me take dried in as an example. Before the arrival, we have our own local gin. We have palm wine. But when they came with bottle of dried gin, we were exchanging a bottle of dried gin for 10 human beings. Then, presently, this is not up to 2,000 naira. But a bottle of writing was an exchange of 10 human beings. Our own local, our home palm wine is better than the writing they are giving us. But we believe that what they are bringing is better than what we have. So whatever the white men brought to us is better than what we have. This is a cannon gun. They brought cannon gun to us so that we can wage war against ourselves. Capture slaves, we sell her to them. And this size was an exchange of 40 human beings. The gunpowder that we needed to power this, we also be in essence of human beings during the period of slave trade. The big size of these was in essence of 100 human beings for the big size of the cannon gun. And over there is the drinking water bowl. 40 to 50 slaves are meant to bring water from this pot at a time. And they drink from the pot with their hand being tied to the back. So they will have to bend down to leap like dog. In the course of leaping, most of them they push one another. They get caught by the head of the pot. The blood drips into the water and they drink the water like that because they have access to food and water most in the day. So it was brought in dead by the white people and the man buried there was the owner of the safe. 
In fact, most of what I'm telling you now, we got the document, some of the document. Inside this place. From here. So this is um, spirit attenuation well at the point of no return. Now, this well was dug by the people of Badaigo. They dug it to hate their business name. So as soon as they force the slave to drink from this well, they as well force them to make this citation. Please listen. I am leaving this land. My spirit is with me. I shall not come back now. My shackles do not break. It is the shackles that holds the ship down. My ancestors bear me witness. I shall not return. This land shall depart. My soul do not revolt. My spirit goes along with me. I depart to the land unknown. I shall not return. After drinking from this well and making this recitation, they become less aggressive and they lose their memory. Um, Jamaica, Haiti, and so on and so forth. You see that some of our culture in Yoruba land are practiced there. They could not return back because of the covenant they made at the point of no return. In Brazil, as we speak, Yoruba is their second official language. How come you run man in Brazil? They left during the period of the trade. They could not return back because of the covenant they made at the point of no return. So it is after drinking from this well, they take them to the ship and they take them out of the country. Timito Pebu is my name. Any question? Uh, well, okay. 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 The water of uh, land of no return. Even presently, it is happening now that even what some of them, when they cross over, they are not going back. Eh. Even now, eh. once they cross over the sea and go abroad, very few comes back. So it's, it's because of greediness. We don't value what we have. Okay. And um, I usually tell people that this country cannot be better in as much as we are still relying on the white men. They are using us. They use us for dirty job. It's present. Yeah. And we believe that um, we cannot make it in Nigeria unless we travel out. Probably because I'm doing this job, I get a lot of free, a lot of free, a lot of feedback mm -hmm. from the black American each time they come on tour. Mm -hmm. I don't wish to travel. If if I will be going, probably go there, spend one or two weeks, come back to Nigeria. So it's because we believe that we cannot make it in Nigeria. That's why we are traveling out. Like the issue of taking them through the Atlantic Ocean, releasing some of them inside the water, still happen to date. Some people want to travel to Italy through the land, and when they get to Libya, they cross. In the course of crossing, they both the capsized. Yes. Some of them fell inside the Atlantic Ocean and they died. Was it not what the white people introduced during the period of slavery? So it's still going on. It's still going on. Yes, sir. So you're welcome. Big thanks to Mr. Topemobile. He has shown us a lot, explained a lot to us. Yeah, I am tired. You can see it all over my face. We've been on the move for like three weeks. Damn. Anyway, we are still enjoying here, but that green tourism is awesome. And big thanks again. You're welcome. So they've been making it so lively and so accommodating for us and we have no reason to regret it. You guys should come here, they are nice and great people. Come check it out. If you can trace your route back to Nigeria, come over. They will give you the insight about everything and you're gonna enjoy your stay. Before now, if you come to if you come to All right. Yeah, that's As actually you nice. Down there, you see the cool breeze of Badagi. Yes. And um, like I said the other time, Badagi is one of the most secured environments in Lagos. Really? Yeah. Um, we have the representative of virtually all the security personnel in Badagi, and so if you come to Badagi, nothing is going to happen on the highland, on the hinterland, anywhere in Badagi. You are we safe. Are, we are very, very safe. You see, except you are you are coming from heaven. Because I, I've been feeling that recently <laughs> yeah. because I've been here, I've been able to take my phone around, record, and the people here have been lovely. We we, we have soldier, we have air force, we have navy. We so have this place is safe for any, any tourists who want you to can come. Come with your car, leave it there, go. Guys, and come back. Come here. You can even stay beside the the the, the shore of this lagoon water. 
from money to 2 3 a.m. and nothing will happen to you oh. here in Badagi. Dope, dope, dope. So, we're going now to check the first the story. The first wedding in Nigeria. So. Where you're going to Hello. see the first, the miracle where the first copy of the English Bible got to Badagi in the year 1842. The Yoruba transition version in the year 1845. And the building of the first story building since the 1842 is still standing up to date. Okay. Let's go, guys. All right. And come check it out. Come and check Badagri out to know your roots, to know your history, to know what your forefathers has passed through since those days now. So you get. Come check it out. For evening. So it will be at sunset. Hmm. Hello? 